Matt Porterfield. Uh, we were so we were yeah we were running into each other on your home turf mm-hmm. in Baltimore mm-hmm. uh, at the Maryland Film Festival. I even I said yeah I can you know we can do this in Baltimore, but you're coming up anyway. I guess it's just easier for here. I am in New York. Here you are in the big city. Just if I'm not mistaken, this is your fourth fourth film. My fourth feature film. Fourth I made feature. a short in there. Uh, carry what you can hold or hold what you Take can what carry. You can Take carry. what you can carry. I knew I was going to screw it up. Close. <laughs> but you're still impressed that I knew. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Hamilton, you, you, you wrote the musical. Uh, Hamilton, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, Putty Hill and uh, I Used to Be Darker. Yes. And now uh, the long-anticipated Sellers Point. Have you premiered, at least local, uh, U.S.-wise? No, no, not even U.S.-wise. But you've done, you've, you've played all four films, at least, at, at the Maryland Film Festival each time. Yes, that's true. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever premiered any of them there? Like not world, world or U.S. Okay. premiere. Okay. The, that's a great festival, people that run that, when they don't take that personally, when they don't insist, Mm-mm. anything like that. Yeah, yeah, they have great programming, but there's no, yeah, I mean, it needs to Egos. be a Maryland premiere. But uh, oh, okay. beyond that, they're not hung up on premiere status. Right. That's nice. So you feel, of course, what a better place to bring fan- friends and family than to yeah. that festival. It's a homecoming. It is, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I know that you're having your theatrical. We're going to say this is probably past tense in terms of my audience because I didn't know. But this mm-hmm. we're speaking on the 8th or 9th? What is today? It mm-hmm. doesn't matter. You're, sc- you're premiering in Baltimore this Friday. That's right. Okay, we're going to put this up a little a few days after that, but I'll still I'll still mention it uh, to everybody. So, how are those experiences for you? Uh, playing in Baltimore? Yeah, like uh, what, who who shows up at that? Do you have like a private screening for friends and family, or do they all wait since they know you're going to be having? A we had a couple rough cut screenings in Baltimore where I invited um, trusted, yeah, friends from different different areas of my life um Uh some colleagues from hopkins where i teach uh some folks from the neighborhood some buddies like Mm -hmm. you know didn't didn't want it to be a crowd of filmmakers um and then uh yeah it was the the first time an audience uh got a chance to see it at the festival this this past weekend um and the premiere should bring more people out there was good there was good buzz Mm -hmm. We're going to open in New York the following week. That'll be the 18th of May. That's right. At Village East. You are East. correct. At mm-hmm. the Village East Cinema. Uh, and then on the 25th in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And then beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned um, you mentioned you teach at, at Johns Hopkins. Is they, do they have a film department? Or is it a media department? What, what, what is it uh, they have? Is it undergraduate? Is it graduate? We have, have a graduate? film and media program that okay. uh, has been around for almost 20 years. That's undergraduate. And then two and a half years ago, we, we began an MA program. Mm-hmm. We also oh. share sort of new state-of-the-art facility with the Maryland Institute College of Art, or MICA. Um, and they also have an a undergrad and a MFA. Mm-hmm. And they lend their spaces, I noticed, at, uh, for the festival, too. Yeah, that's right. A lot of a lot of Mica theater spaces used uh, during the Maryland Film Festival. Yeah, because they're also central now. Everything very centralized for the festival. You have the new Parkway or the re- re- revamped Parkway in the last couple of years now. So the name of this film, as we said before, is called Sollers Point. I know that's a, a uh, neighborhood in uh, the Baltimore area, right? Mm-hmm. The proper within the city, or is it within the? It's county? actually Baltimore County. Baltimore County. Mm-hmm. And what is it about that area where mm-hmm. you figured this is there's mm-hmm. something about this area that you know has my yeah. attention? Well, it's part of a larger neighborhood uh, that was built as a company town by Bethlehem Steel called Dundalk. What was the name? Dundalk. Dundalk. Um, huh. So Solar's Point is some people consider it a neighborhood. It's definitely a street that runs through Dundalk and other neighborhoods like Turner Station. Um, it's interesting because not only does it have this uh, industrial history, it uh, it's also has a strong maritime tradition. It's right on the Chesapeake Bay or the waterways that lead into the bay. I've never been able to shoot a, a film on the water, uh, at least not um, within the city limits. So that was something that interests me. 
We're right outside the city limits, but close enough. Mm -hmm. It was a similar socioeconomic milieu to uh, the neighborhood where I grew up, where I shot Hamilton and Putty Hill. Mm -hmm. So I felt comfortable um, making a film there, um, exploring themes of the you know working class. So it kind of had everything I I wanted. It's uh, it feels urban, but uh, also kind of pastoral. Mm-hmm. Um, a kind of vast expanse of, of sort of uh, now for kind of like forgotten geography. So the the steel industry is dormant. Um, there's a lot of underemployment and unemployment in the area. Uh, it seemed like a good place to to tell a story about a young man kind of struggling to to find uh, work and 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 meaning um, in the modern world. Mm-hmm. This young man recently comes out of uh, a prison sentence. He's he, trying to go straight, as it were. He's played by the actor Nicole Lombardi, who mm-hmm. people may recognize from Patty Cakes, I think, and he was also in American Honey. Mm-hmm. Both great films. So you, it's nice that you got an actor who's... You know, he's obviously not done a lot of film work, but the projects he's chosen now are three really, uh, I think, solid films with a lot of pedigree. Yeah, I he's include got, you in that. Thanks. He's I got some new things lined up. He's he's very selective. He is, mm-hmm. right? He's got a lot of charisma, yet he also, I don't know, he has a, a very thoughtful style, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and he's from, I understand he's actually from Baltimore. Yes. Or at least the, the, the spot, right, the area. Yeah, he's from Baltimore County too, right. uh, but just a Does mile like accident? north of the, the, the city line. Um, you know, n- no, not an accident. I mean, we were drawn to him because of American Honey. Uh, hadn't seen the film, but heard that he was in it. He was uh, um, young and and has a great face. That's about all I knew. And then we figured out he's from Baltimore, so yeah. we met and had a um, had an interview, kind of informal interview at a diner, and. He'd read the script and really responded to it. He just he understood Jeez. the themes. Uh, he'd known a lot of people like his character Keith, and he was charismatic. Uh, I liked him right away. Yeah, and that kind of old Hollywood also has that that the looks and the charm. Uh, I imagine I don't know. I'm, no, he's I'm, very charming. I, I saw him like for a heartbeat at the festival actually. Um, but did he also see, go and do? His due diligence. Did did, did he go? Had he gone seen your earlier films as well? Yeah, he had. He, yeah. he really liked Putty Hill. That was the first one he watched, uh-huh. and he thought it was really cool. and And it was, you know, Putty Hill was was made just like a, like a, like a mile away from where he grew up, so it was, it was really familiar to him. And uh, mm-hmm. he just believed in the project completely, and was like, "This film is the one. This is what I want to do. I'm I can play this role." He convinced me. Not that you have not done this before with prior projects entirely, but I, it was very notable this time that you, your cast includes a mixture of seasoned actors, a couple of emerging actors, sort of like, uh, uh, I'm gonna, I don't want to screw up his name, McCall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and to some degree, I guess you could also put, uh, probably include Zussie, although she's working a lot now. Mm-hmm. You see her a lot all over, but she's still rather young. And then a Lynn Cohen and yep. uh, Jim Belushi, people that have really worked for many, many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and Marin Ireland is in the film yep. for even for, if only briefly. What is that? Uh, what? Because I can imagine that. What are the conversations you have with the more seasoned actors that maybe have less uh, experience working alongside of non-professionals and young actors? I mean, mm-hmm. what? What is that like as a director for you? Yeah, it was my first time putting together this kind of melange of experience. <laughs> That's a faster way. I could have just said, hey, you made a melange here with that. <laughs> should have said that. I don't get to use that word too often. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> um, and it's, it has challenges. It's, it's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, yeah. too. I mean, I've seen it like not work. You know, you put professional actors, actors with vast experience next to actors who are relatively new to the screen and... and you know, some there's this awkwardness that comes that comes through in the sort of the gap in between. But um, I feel, uh, you know, I'm not objective exactly, but I feel I feel like it, it, we pull it off. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with the generosity of the 
the more seasoned actors um, like Lynn Cohen and Jim Belushi um, who have been doing this for a long time film, television, legit theater, uh, improv in Jim's case they're generous and they give as much to the person they're playing opposite in a scene even when they're off camera as they do when they're uh, at the center of the scene Mm -hmm. and I hadn't seen anybody do that before. It was very, it was very touching. Um, you know, I, I think it requires patience to, to work with actors who, you know, um, aren't used to memorizing and then reciting lines, uh, who aren't used to traditional coverage, to all the waiting around. Coverage is, uh, when you're taking extra angles, right? Same scene. Yep, just redoing them with different camera angles, right? Yeah, there's so zoom close-ups, different, different. So you have choices in the editing room. Exactly. Right? So, it, it, but it requires a kind of compartmentalization of performance, which amateurs don't have. don't realize. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think whether you're working with professional or non-professional actors, I mean, anybody really, you you just want to give them uh, the necessary information and then answer. Uh, as well as you can any questions that they that they have i wouldn't say that professional actors have more or less questions than um actors who are totally green like lynn cohen had had a lot of questions and she wanted to talk through um her concept of of her character and her relationship to keith grandson so yes uh, jim belushi plays keith again is recently out of jail and he has to move in with his dad played by jim jim belushi He's under house, essentially under house arrest, right? Mm-hmm. The character, and then he does. Though he's allowed to, obviously, that's a loose definition of what he's. He's under more, more like immediate neighborhood arrest. Uh, well, because he does go, or does he have to report that stuff? I, I don't know if it's even in the film. I can't recall. There's a transition. There's a there's a point at which he is off house arrest. Oh. Okay, yeah. that explains it. Mm-hmm. All right, so so he, there are visits to like ex girlfriend, uh, grandma, played again by Glenn Cohen, uh, and so I'm sorry. So I just wanted to explain those mm-hmm. those roles. But uh, yeah, Lynn, I, I remember. I can even remember roles where she's worked in many indie films, and I know that she's probably had. She's accustomed to the wide variety of of uh, experience. Yeah. Um, and she loves Keith. I mean, McCall. Oh, yeah? She, she, I mean, her. it's funny. She could identify and find the love for Keith, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. character, but she also fell in love with McCall during the shoot. And me, too. She was like, I mean, yeah. she's the age of my grandmother. Know, I'm very close with my grandmother. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. yeah, we just bonded very quickly. It was like instant. I hadn't met her before. Oh, no? Uh she walked on set. No, with her husband. She's uh, she's uh, a sensual person. <laughs> she, I know her quite well, actually, from a number of reasons and years. And uh, yeah, she's she's really uh, terrific. She's great. Yeah, I met her in a liquor store. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, you're lucky to know her, and I feel the same way. She's most famous for those listening, uh, probably. I'm going to, or most recognized, as playing Magda on. Uh, Sex, Sex and, and the City. City, yeah. Anyway, she played the the nanny or mm-hmm. whatever governess, whatever nanny, I guess is. It. Where were we at? Oh, so so, and, but you know, so I was saying, oh yeah, so Lynn, uh, I I can see even though she was questioning in terms of uh, character and and that, but but I you know I don't know Jim Belushi, but I can imagine that I only know him from TV sitcoms and Hollywood movies at this point, and it surprised to me in in the casting your choice, though, I was extremely. I don't know, just uh, really, uh, I think, um, impressed. And, and I, if I hadn't known him from that, I would have just thought this is a, a, an indie actor or something. You know, he Cool. I think that's what you're suggesting is that yeah. he, he understood what you're trying to do and he didn't ex- kind of try to steal any of the, the energy out of the room. No, he fit into the picture perfectly. Yeah, really yeah. well. So what was that? Uh, he, he just wanted to try to stretch a little bit. Or I mean, he's been making some really interesting choices, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, most recently he's in, uh, uh, Woody Allen's last, the Coney Island picture. Um, Oh, okay. That's probably why I didn't. He's know. in, um, <laughs> yeah, which I haven't seen, but, yeah. uh, he's also in, uh, the, 
Redux Twin Peaks. Um, he plays a pretty significant supporting role in Twin Peaks and the new Twin Peaks. Um, he's got a couple other indie titles to his credit, and, and he's been doing a lot of television. He's always working. Um, and then he tours regularly uh, with his improv troupe. Oh, right. Um, so he, I think he loves working. He likes challenging himself. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter what... I think he's kind of comfortable working on any level of, yeah. of production. Um, you know, we, we didn't have a, a trailer or a lot of the amenities that he's used to. We just had a, you know, a little room off set where he could chill out. We made sure nobody was in his eye line. Um, he likes to keep things fresh, so we tried to, you know, introduce um, props and objects and and sounds and sights that 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 kind of kept him on his toes, which is something that he he wants from production. Um, but he's really cl- creative and, and and collaborative. He's got a keen imagination, which is like right. Uh, that, that that's had to be developed for the, all the improv. It has to be exactly, and, and, and also him him working well in that environment i didn't think about that before. yeah i forgot that he doesn't but he I mean, wants spontaneity i mean he, he's yeah. got his lines right. he knows the, the the deal right um but he he likes to inject uh like little actions to 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 to, to, to foster um spontaneity and the feeling of of, of, of freshness freshness you mentioned no one in his sight line what did you mean by that Oh, because uh, you know, there's a lot of people on 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 set and standing around, yeah. and some people are unnecessary and watching. Um, that's a thing that, like, you know, makes uh, when he's doing the scene, he just wants he doesn't want to see yeah. uh, people except for whoever's operating the camera, perhaps you yep. and me and the other actors on set. Exactly, on this. Not okay, a bunch I, of I standing around. Okay, I wrote some real notes here, uh, it's, which is not typical. <laughs> but what do you look for? This is a note I, I never do this. But what do you look for so they all work? Oh, this kind of gets back to uh, what I was saying, and they also maintain that verisimilitude. Asked and answered, Your Honor. You've done this. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm going to just say again, the name of the film is Soller's Point. It's opening uh, in Baltimore on the 11th of May, New York City on the 18th of May at the uh, Village Cinema East. Village East, yeah. Village East on 2nd Avenue, right? That's the yeah, one. yeah, yeah, we're at Tribeca. You're going to be there... I'll be there opening weekend. You will? Oh, mm-hmm. good. Okay. Uh, so, you know, meet Matt uh, in person. Anybody else from the film going to be down there? Um, who else will we have? We'll Lynn. probably have some... Lynn. Lynn. She's going to be yeah, in New York. Yeah, Lynn She's Lynn Lynn on the Upper East Side. Alyssa Bresnahan. Yeah, some other folks. Uh-huh. And, uh, I, you know, about six, seven years ago, remember we did, a, I hosted a party for the DVD release of Putty Hill? Mm-hmm. And, and that was fun. And uh, I think you had worked with Mark Vives. He did the uh, editing? Yeah, he's your editor yep. to this day. So, are, yep. are, is that you've worked with him on everything? Uh, yeah, he's he's one of my key collaborators. He started. We started together on Putty Hill because uh-huh. I edited my first film, Hamilton, myself. He cut. I used to be darker, and he cut. Um, now yeah. Soller's Point. Right. Anybody else who you are also in that team? Since Producers. you are, since you're, you know, the community in Baltimore. Not to say that I know people. I don't know where. Is Mark from? In, is Mark is here? from New Jersey, but based oh. in New York. Okay. okay. Yeah. So they come to you anyway. If once you're on a project, yeah. you're, all, you're all working together. Uh, anybody else in that team? Um, Ryan Zacharias mm-hmm. is a producer. Jordan Mincer, also a producer. Mm-hmm. Steve Holmgren, mm-hmm. another producer. Oh, Steve, sure. Yeah. That's right. I forgot that's right. Mm-hmm. I think he introduced us uh, way back. Yeah. Or I think uh, I met Steve a long time ago. Is Steve in New York, uh, on the East Coast again? Or is he was last? Um, he'll he be was... returning to the East Coast. He just passed both the L.A. and New York bar exams. So he's uh, he's got some freedom. That's insane. Right. He can be as bi-coastal as he wants to be. Exactly. Right? right. And you're not going anywhere. You're going to stay in Baltimore. No, I'm in Baltimore. I might travel a bit this summer. Yeah. But, uh, well, I, I just mean yeah. you're staying in. Uh, yep. But you've got a lot of. Do you have, immediate you have, future. You have family in there? I have family in Baltimore. My uh-huh. mother, dad, grandma. Oh, that's family. And then uh, my siblings are in New York. Uh-huh. You have your own family? No. Okay. But your family is, for the time being, your film families and your family. I have a healthy film family. <laughs> you do. Yeah. You're building an, a, a, a lovely, I guess, collection of, 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 of stories, of films, of, fam- of people, of actors, and uh, creating a little universe, I think. It's special. Mm. There aren't a lot of filmmakers who are doing that. Thanks. And uh, so I, I hope that um, you'll uh, come back. So um, since we're talking about Marilyn, we have a few more minutes here. 
Did you get? To, you asked me before if I saw anything at the uh, Maryland Film Festival. And I said I saw. I'm not a witch. I saw Cannibal, which is scarring and also gratifying at the same time. And I yeah. saw. Uh, what else did I see? I saw Clara's Ghost, the Elliot Family mm-hmm. film, and uh, did I see what else? I mean, I seen a few of the films that were there before, like uh, We the Animals. I think that was one okay. of them. Did you see that one? I haven't seen it yet, but it's been recommended. Yeah, I think that's probably, probably people would think that would be kind of your speed for whatever reason. But did you get to see anything when you were there? Yeah, I saw Cannaba as well, which, okay. I, which I did really like. I'm a big fan of, of Lucian and Verena and uh, the Sensory Ethnography Lab. Um, I also saw Black Mother. Yes, Kali Kali Kala, Kala's film, which, which I saw too. Which uh, I really loved. I yeah. mean, I, I heard that he introduced the first screening by, by saying, you know, it's okay to close your eyes. And uh, mm. um, I didn't hear him say that, but I, I, I definitely was drifting in and out of sleep. So it kind of it washed over me, but in a really lovely way. I mean, some of my favorite movie going mm-hmm. memories are of falling asleep in movies. Um, I didn't fall asleep in, in Black Mother, but I was, I was drifting a little. And, and there's something about the film that lends itself to that Very much. kind of experience. Very much. Yeah. His films, because of the dis- the, the juxtaposition, it's a overused word sometimes, but it, picture and sound. between yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, it really it, it lends itself. Let's face it, and uh, same with his earlier film, mm-hmm. film niggas, you know. Yeah, but was that it? That's I a also lot. saw I saw um, uh, All Square. Yeah, that closing night film. Yep, and I did. A, I did. A, I saw that at South by Southwest, uh-huh. and I actually had on. It was a, it was an opportunity. They offered me. A, you know, a couple of like the main actor uh, for who's on uh, uh, House of Cards, but they are uh, they yeah, offered yeah, me a number yeah, of actors yeah, from the film, and I said, uh, "Harris Ullin is he doing?" Pr-? And they said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to talk to Harris Ullin?" I said, uh, 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 "Whatever." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. And I got I got because I had been, I once called up his house. I'm like strange with that. I like certain actors, and I just am curious. Yeah. So yeah, and he did, and I told him how I. I reminded him, I said, once, one night I called you your house, you can hear it on the show, but I, I called your house and your wife answered and and she said you were having dinner and I apologized, I calling out of the blue like this, you were listed though, you <laughs> know, so I just <laughs> called, you know, and uh, he, he said, he was so funny. And then I got back to New York and like a week or two later, I'm walking on, I'm, I'm, I'm on the Upper East Side and, and there he is like just standing on the corner. Harris, I recognized him, you know, mm-hmm. he was, even though he was, not easy to see. Anyway, I love that guy. Yeah, he has such a great. Uh, do you get to get, do you get to a lot of festivals during the? I right? do. Do you? Yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah, is that just you just enjoy it? It's a nice way to uh, mostly. I mean, or I, is it I just like meeting your programmers films? and other filmmakers mm-hmm. and producers and um, seeing films. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know if you had time with with being uh, teaching classes. Yeah, my my load is two and two, such that I can I can take a week off here and there or travel for a long weekend. Uh huh. Right. And, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I try to do. You know, maybe like. I don't know, four or five festivals in a season or mm-hmm. a circuit. I like to do certain ones over every year. Now I would include Maryland in there. Absolutely going to go every if, as cool. long as I can. I I really do enjoy it, um, and I like seeing the city. Uh, I have curiosity about the city, and then. Uh, but I also like to trade in, a, or, or not trade in, but, you know, try uh, experimenting like a different festival here and there. One you haven't been to before. Yeah. yeah. You know, and tr- each year, maybe try one or two that I've never been to. I don't go to too many. But I would, I think, uh, for sure, Maryland, it's just so well programmed, as you said. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. So, I, you don't usually strike out, is my point. You know, no. you, you can go to just about any, you don't need an agenda. You can go and kind of just take your ch- chances, and chances are... Almost everything you see is going to be right in Maryland. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm glad we finally did this. Yeah, and, me too. Adam. And you know, uh, wish you really well and a lot of success with Soller's Point. Thank you. And scene, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> scene. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that'll be. Uh, I hope maybe I'll run into you next week when you're back. Uh, it might happen. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>